It was a question of churn, churn, churn for Louise Quirk when she went to the Manx Folk Museum to hear Walter Clark tell listeners about butter making in years past and to draw her attention to an enormous churn. Whose job would it have been then to, to have turned that thing? Because it looks big, and I'm sure once it was full of the, or the substance becoming butter, that it must have been some weight to turn around. Oh, it was, yes, but there were some very robust young, young ladies on the farms <laughs> in the old days, and uh, it usually fell to the girls in the house to do it, and the women folk, of course. If it got tough going and the, there was a demand for butter, then the older people would do it, and they would churn out the butter and make... Uh, Produce something like 20, 30 pounds of butter, mm-hmm. things like that, which is sent into market, of course, into Douglas and places like that. They also made cheese, and that's a cheese press there. And the cheeses were made and put in the press and left to, to drain out with the weight on them to go down. Uh, but these, the crocks and the, the butter workers, etc., that's a very early churn. That's the, uh, the staff churn there, which uh, was very, very early. It was the forerunner of these type of churns, and it was just like using a plunger mm. all the time, like similar to the Indians do their meal and stuff like that. That must have been much harder work than if, uh, actually turning the, the butter churn. It was, it was indeed, and uh, the result was very, very poor also. Mm. You know, they didn't produce the stuff that uh, the end over end churns did. Now, those interesting look, look, looking little wooden things, are they the pats that they used to make the butter with into nice shapes. They were the butter pats and and of course they also had their own uh, moulds. Each farm had its own um, very carefully uh, carved mould and they produced flowers, Mm. nuts, roses, animals, you name it, and their initials on the pats of butter, uh, like a trademark. Mm. Pity they still didn't do that really. (laughs) It is a pity. All the colour's gone out of shopping Mm. nowadays. It's all labels and wrappings, you see. Mm. Yeah. Now that bowl there, that's a terrific size mixing bowl. I've got one of those at home, which is considerably smaller. Yeah. I mean, what, what was that actually used for? That was for cheese making, mm. yes. They would put all the curds in that, and uh, then they would activate it, and, uh, and then they would have to sort of uh, chop it all up and cut it up and cube it and get it all ready for putting in the press there. Then we put in the press, mm. and the, the press actually wound tight down on top of the, the actual wooden tub and then a weight put on here which give a continual drag down forcing the the weight down mm. and the liquid out through the bottom of the, the press mm. so really young ladies as you say of that day didn't bother with diets they needed all the strength they could get oh i would imagine so it was a hard life in the old days but i think they were more content